Yesterday, Vladimir Zelensky spoke to the leaders of Western powers about further support packages for Kiev. The president of Ukraine also asked for tougher sanctions against Moscow. I asked Prime Minister Justin Trudeau for help in clearing our land of Russian mines and explosives. Our territories are currently the most mined in the world. Now we need to break down these explosives as quickly as possible until we know their relative location. Otherwise, this problem will remain unresolved for decades. Meanwhile, Russian artillery continues to fire at Ukrainian towns in the eastern part of the country. After the last attack on Kharkiv, the energy infrastructure was damaged, as a result of which the inhabitants were deprived of electricity. The explosion was so big that our building trembled all over. Two more explosions followed. We were left without light and without hot water, because we heated the water with an electric boiler. According to the Ministry of the Interior of Georgia, at the last border crossing, more than 10,000 Russians crossed daily. Immigrants also come to Georgia from the territory of Barmy. The main reason for migration is the Russian military mobilization. Visitors to the border leave their cars, most of them have no money, and travel with only one suitcase. First we were driving a car, but we realized it would take us a few days to get through the traffic jam, so we left the car and went on foot. We walked over 20 hours. The avalanche influx of immigrants is triggering numerous protests on the Russian-Georgian border. Georgia allows Russians to stay for a year without a visa and is one of the most popular migration destinations. Meanwhile, Finnish authorities announced today the suspension of the issue of tourist visas for Russians. The Russian-Georgian border should be closed to Russian citizens. In addition, we believe that Russian citizens should be barred from registering bank accounts in Georgia in order to limit their ability to register business and obtain a temporary or permanent residence permit. Yesterday, Washington announced that the United States would send another package of military support to Kiev. This time, the aid amounts to over $1 billion. Experts link this information with the publication by the Kremlin of the results of the referenda imposed by Russia in Ukraine's eastern oblasts last week. The United States will never recognize Russia's attempts to annex parts of Ukraine. Quite the opposite. We will continue to work with allies and partners to bring even more pressure on Russia and the individuals and entities that are helping support its attempted land grab. You can expect additional measures from us in the coming days. The United States Department of Justice called on Congress to close the loopholes that make it difficult for the United States to prosecute war criminals. Currently, the ministry's priority is to arrest and prosecute those responsible for the atrocities committed during the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Justice Department is committed to holding the perpetrators of such grave crimes fully accountable. During a trip to Ukraine in June, uh, Attorney General Garland announced the creation of the department's war crimes accountability team to centralize and strengthen our Ukraine accountability efforts. Most likely, tomorrow, Moscow will formally annex the occupied oblasts of Ukraine, the four regions in Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson. The West has condemned the illegal plebiscites. As a result of the annexation, Ukraine will lose more than 15% of its territory.